Welcome back to um, this segment, part two uh, of fate versus free will. Mm -hmm. And we were focusing on a point of angels. If we've been sent nothing but angels, then how come we have angels that transgress on us right. in this realm? Well, the, uh, the angelic worlds I'm thinking of are advanced worlds of, of beauty and light and knowledge and existence. And this world is inhabited by myriads of different energies. And I don't know if you want to call them angels. I mean, for example, taking the, the extremes to give, you know, give the example, the Muladhara Chakra, which allows us to actually get up you know, and stand and do things, is the material energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the lower chakra energies come from our mother, which is Earth. So she uh, gives us those, those four lower chakras, and that's her energetic. And then, uh, as you rightly said, the, the, the heart chakra is sort of like the integrator of all the higher spiritual realms into the mm -hmm. realms that come from our planet. And um, let's take the material energy. It's... Uh, it's Understanding is basically on and off. It's, it's, it's consciousness is on or off, mm -hmm. right? And so um, you, you uh, one could say it's not a very high level of consciousness, right? Mm. Now, I don't know if you'd describe that as an angel, it's just an energy. It's an energy of the, a universal energy. Mm -hmm. And um, it's uh, very, very important for us to be able to function, you know, in, in our physical form. However, <coughs> if that energy gets into the human mind, then there are only, only two states of consciousness, on or off, right? Mm -hmm. So if you walk into a bank and you see a whole pile of money, if that energy is, is you know, filled your mental area, you'll just do anything to get that money because you want it. That's what you mm -hmm. want. So that could be called demonic. So one of the world, and you, you could, I don't know what your terminology is, is demonic angels or whatever, but that energy is of a lower nature. Um, mm -hmm. And that in fact is the energy which reckons that it can do anything it likes. So you see how the two match up? So you walk into a bank, you're filled with the energy of the lower chakra, you see a pile of money and it's, you want it, right? You can do anything you like. You want it, so you just go for it. And all the rest goes, is, doesn't matter, killing people, hurting yourself, causing trouble, doesn't matter because you, you, you only think in terms of on or off. Yeah. So um, you'll find that all suffering uh, comes from humans acting from these lower levels of consciousness, yeah. right? and it's called ignorance. Mm. And one of the most beautiful uh, definitions of uh, compassion is the understanding of ignorance. Mm. So when you have psychic vision and you, someone comes along and is not nice to you, right? You can look at that person and one thing you should typically do is look at yourself and say, you know, is there something you know, amiss in the way I'm, I'm behaving? So you, you look at that aspect of it. And you look at the other person, you say, you know, where is the energy coming from that's causing that person to behave the way they do? Right? And with psychic vision, you can see it. Mm -hmm. And then, if you are in a, a really good place, you actually love the person who's being mean to you because you know that they're only doing it because they're ignorant. Yeah, lack of understanding. They lack understanding. Yeah. So if so you can see the auras and the colours, uh, you can actually determine who's um, uh, just trying to deceive you and who's not yes and so you can you can act through love and that's uh, it's a uh, <coughs> it's a marvelous state uh, that you know we can achieve as human beings mm. is we can actually achieve a state of love 
for all beings. And that, you know, when you mentioned the collective humanity, uh, we are, in essence, one, one being. being mm. But we're oh, one being, which is many beings, and beings at all different states of consciousness. It's all very, very dynamic, as you know. Mm. Mm. And so the, the wisdom of, of spirit is to see all of this mm. and then to react through love. Mm. So yeah, the um, <coughs> a definition uh, when we talk about evil, uh, from what I understand, good and evil don't really exist, right? There's mm. just energy. Um, but we use the illusions in order to define ourselves in, as we go through this, um, this realm, this physical realm. And so we uh, call something evil if it's damaging to life, uh, and that's necessary, otherwise we won't change it, right? We won't yeah. progress to a higher, a higher level. Um, but in itself, the evil is not a, a being, it's yeah. something that humans take on board Yes. And they can, you know, this is their free will. They can choose to be nasty or they can choose to be good. Exactly. Um, however, uh, there's also the, um, the law of karma which comes into it as well and the cause and effect. And sometimes the, the transgressor, uh, you've actually contracted with them to be that transgressed. Yeah. Well, there, there's a great uh, concept, a lovely word that it's, needs a lot of thought and meditation mm -hmm. uh, in Sanskrit and it's called Dharma. Yeah, the Dharma. And yeah. Dharma is, it, it, it would take a long time to describe Dharma, but one could say it's everything in its right place, everything in its right position. Mm. So uh, when you talk about good, you could say everything's in its correct position. And when you say bad, it's not in its, its right position. Yeah. Yeah, so it's almost as simple as that. <laughs> it is as, as simple as that. And then you get all the seven chakras, let's say, and all these interactions through the human psyche and the human mind. And you can see the great confusion about good and evil, can't you? Because mm. there are all these different energies, uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, you know, in our, in our being, and we have to choose <coughs> or we believe we have to choose, you know, which is the right, right path to follow. So mm. it, 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 this uh, thing of fate and free will is, is very much dependent on levels of consciousness. Mm. Yeah, and and uh, <coughs> I, I think that um, as examples of, of the great the great beings of the world, they are what might be termed egoless because they're utterly surrendered. Mm -hmm. So they're just completely at peace and mm. stuff happens mm. around them, right? Yeah. And they just flow, they flow. The, the Buddhists have got a lovely simile of a, a leaf flowing down a river. Have you mm. heard that one where they they say the leaf just flows with the river and if it gets into an eddy, it goes into an eddy, it goes up a waterfall, but the leaf is just with, at one with the river, right? Mm -hmm. And I think in our highest state, uh, where we, strangely enough, I think, release what might be termed free will, is when you get just into a state of peace. You get, you get into a state of absolute yeah. stillness but that, that that peace can also be with whatever action you're taking you, you can be doing something extremely difficult uh, to an outside observer and yet you're still at peace uh, we can demon you know i often um, harp on that point in a yoga class we're doing something rather difficult and you have to really work at it to mm. stay uh, connected and all this, um, and yet you're having a ball. Yeah. Right? You're having a great time, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's difficult. Yep. And somebody on the outside is saying, "Oh, that's impossible," mm -hmm. but for you, it's not impossible. Yeah. 
And I think the, the, the final uh, uh, part of this uh, will and free will thing is uh, to be of service to, to yeah. others. Um, <coughs> and we'll find that the, at the peak of our uh, abilities, we, we help others mm. and we give of our uh, qualities and we feel love. And I find when I do have that experience <coughs> that the, the, the gift is internal. You know, mm. when you do something of, of that sort of nature, you go into a state of ecstasy mm. and that the ecstasy is, is the reward, you know, for, you know, whatever. Not that it would happen all the time, mm. but it, it certainly seems that way. And that's going back to that previous discussion about sex because I think when one gets into these states, these ecstatic states, <coughs> while sex is great, it's a physical thing, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the ecstatic states are just, you know, inside the consciousness. Mm -hmm. And they are totally remarkable. I have been fortunate enough <coughs> to experience these states sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. And they're just absolutely wonderful. So um, th I think that's where we're going in this, this sort of great journey of free will and, uh, and uh, fate. Mm. Um, it, it's just a, I've never heard a, a very sort of esoteric uh, model of why it's all here, other than the childlike one saying, there's this, this childlike creator who just loves creating. Well, I, I mentioned the, um, uh, the tantric, uh, the view that <coughs> there's nothing to do in this world of bamboo but everybody needs a hobby, right? In other words, we're here by choice because we want to experience who we are. Yeah, right? it's And a, you can't experience who you are in the absolute. You can only know yourself as a concept, right? And so okay, that's, that's why duality was created, mm -hmm. right? So you can have these opposites, which mm -hmm. are all illusions, you know, the good versus evil, uh, the short versus tall, mm. fat versus skinny, whatever, cold mm. and hot. Um, however, it defines us, right? Yeah. And we begin the journey when we're born with amnesia, right? That, that's a necessary part of it because if you know who you are already, then you can't experience who you are. I don't think we've got enough uh, faculties to remember it all at once. Uh, we we well, just go crazy. Well, <laughs> my understanding all, is all the, the skills that you build up in this current lifetime mm -hmm. will go with you into your next incarnation. Yeah. Right? Now, you might have a, a slightly different mix of, um, uh, let's say, entities which make up the, uh, the next incarnation, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, but there's a, you know, there, there is a correlation, right? And so if you learn how to play cricket this, this lifetime, you'll probably be a natural next lifetime, mm -hmm. right? And so you take the subconscious memories through incarnations yes. ad infinitum, uh, yes. it, well, it doesn't go for that long. Um, what you don't take is the intellect, mm -hmm. right? The intellect stops short, right? So you've got a, a subconscious memory which goes forever. In fact, it goes back to the beginning of the human race, right? But the intellect <coughs> is only for this lifetime and it's not very reliable either, when you think about it. <laughs> mm. You know, the memories we've yeah, got. Yeah, I, I, I hear what you say. I, yeah. I think it all, you take it all with you. Like that, people say that the actual shape of our bodies and the shape of our face and everything is a complete integration of all those previous lifetimes. Well, um, one of the, um, the points is that when we choose to experience duality and the human experience, uh, in general, we want to experience it all, all the levels, all the, um, uh, the levels of um, affluence, right down to poverty, all races. You know, if we're talking about planet Earth, right, we, wa we want to experience all, all the concepts in all, in all places, mm. all, the, all the feelings, all the emotions. And so we, you know, we're not always good guys, right? We, we can experience um, being a victim 
or the perpetrator. There's a very nice yeah. story <coughs> which bears some thought. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, just talking figuratively as a child, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> God called one of the souls across wherever God is and said, I want to talk to you about a contract I got. He said, look, um, I can uh, give you, you know, 100 and 50 new, another new lifetimes and you'll find, you know, the highest, you'll achieve the highest. Mm -hmm. But I've got this other job that has to be done. Yeah, it's a bit difficult, but if you, if you just have that one lifetime, uh, you'll get the whole job done. You'll, you'll get to enlightenment. So which, you know, which choice do you want? And of course the, the soul says, I'll, I'll take the second one, right? So this guy was incarnated as the really evil dude in uh, the Ramayana, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the king of um, Sri Lanka, right? Mm -hmm. And um, he did all sorts of terrible things. He's very clever. But he was needed as an actor by God, you know, as you say in this mm. you know, was he duality. A warlord? Mm? Was he a warlord? He was the king of Sri Lanka. Yeah. Ravana was his name. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> he actually stole Rama's wife, Sita, and then Rama went uh, over to get Sita back <coughs> and actually killed Rama. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you're looking at God when you die, you, you, you ascend to, to enlightenment. So it, it's interesting, these dark angels and dark forces and why they're here. And uh, it does sound quite reasonable that they're here, as you say, because you need to have the, the two different sides, to have the experience. You know, it's, if you, if you didn't have duality, these yeah. of duality. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thought about free will and, and fate. Mm. Yeah, I, I could also um, expand the, um, uh, the, the scope of that and talk about, we could actually talk about collective free will. Mm. Uh, because my understanding is it works individually and it works collectively for countries or or, or even the the entire human race, right? Um, and um, some of the information uh, I've come across, I was I say I was guided to back in the early 1980s, you know, a fairly young bloke. Um, it was telling me that. Um, Humanity has done some terrible things to itself, right? Uh, and so it was very damning of humanity. It was also saying that the information that's coming through now is going to sweep through humanity in, in the coming decades, which is exactly what it's doing, mm. right? But because of the, the damning nature of humanity, it, it, it had taken lots of uh, terrible turns. 20th century was pretty damn awful. Um, it was saying that it's almost inevitable uh, that the human race is going to do itself in. Right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you another nice take on that, if I may. <clears throat> when Jesus was here, let's say a couple thousand years ago, I mean, just putting it into different words, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and being a little bit flippant, uh, Jesus said, listen, guys, um, you're going to go into this new stage of the intelligence growing. Mm. So this, this gift of intelligence is going to be given to the whole of the human race. That's going to be a very, very, very dangerous time because mm. intelligence is an extremely powerful tool, mm. uh, a, a dual-edged sword, if you like, and um, it can be used for good and it can be used for bad. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so what I, the message I want to give you guys is when you go into this state of, of gaining intelligence, uh, use love to be your guide. So whenever you have to make a decision, you know, should I do this, should I do that? Think to yourself, which is the loving, which is a loving decision? Yeah. So that <coughs> gives a, an interesting understanding of the chaos of the time since Jesus Christ. I know there may have been chaos before him, but there's certainly been chaos after him. Mm. And, and I believe that has been because the universe allows, it allows its parts to 
to uh, experience. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it doesn't. Uh, um, well, that's what I think there was a little <laughs> boy once said to me. Um, oh, it's a different thing, but th it is said that that God doesn't want to make us love God. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. God wants us to take a decision mm. to love God, and so that <clears throat> this great experience of expansion is occurring, and all these terrible errors. Uh, particularly with the intellect, it's, it's the intellect that's actually caused, if you look at the history of the last couple thousand years, it's the intellect that's caused. Yeah, I go along with that, and we yeah. could be moving back into the realm of what's known as silent knowledge, right? We've been in the point of reason for a long time, many mm. thousands of years, mm. and it's, it's vastly inferior to silent knowledge. So if you can imagine Mm -hmm. Knowing things without having to intellectualize them. Yes. That's a, that's a more powerful way to live. Yeah, well, we should um, uh, close up soon, but I, mm -hmm. I think on that point, uh, meditation for me is the great royal path mm -hmm. <coughs> because it, it goes into that silent knowledge. And it's a very difficult path because mm -hmm. when you start, of course, your mind's running all over the place and you, you think nothing's happening. Mm. But I can, I can really, really recommend for all of us mm. to take that time, whether it's five minutes or, or ten minutes a day, yes. and just go into the silent space, inner space of meditation as a witness, mm. and just allow things to happen. Just stay in that space, because mm. that silent place has got all, all knowledge in it. So I think we have to wrap up now. Mm -hmm. We're getting the signal. Yeah. So um, I certainly am very grateful for having this talk with you, George. Yes, and, um, thank you. It's, it's a vast subject. Yes. Uh, there are other elements. And um, we can actually, can what I've, into it. I've noticed on YouTube, what they do is they encourage people who are watching these videos to, to ask questions. Oh, they've got the, uh, yes, the chat so, thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's it would be lovely if people who are watching could uh, ask questions about what we're saying. Give some comments. And, Give uh, some comments, yeah. Yeah, ask us a anything about your existence or, or, our, or our existence and we'll endeavour to answer. How's yeah, that? Yeah, <laughs> okay. okay, so. Thanks. Namaste. Thank you.